Test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, October 13th. I'm Donna Will, Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families webinar series. We're presenting our 26th webinar entitled Self-Employment, which is being facilitated by Mary Ann Kane Breshi, Director of Family Supports for DDA. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar by computer and phone. If you have trouble hearing, you can try switching by clicking on the audio tab in the webinar panel. There is a handout for the webinar and you can find it in the handout section. You can uh, also email me, donna.will, at maryland.gov if you are listening by phone. Um, we are recording the webinar and we post those on the DDA website. Uh, at the end, we'll take questions directly related to the webinar. And if you have questions, regarding services and supports, please contact your local regional office. If you have questions related to Appendix K, please submit them to dda.toolkitinfo at maryland.gov. In addition, we're interested in highlighting how people with disabilities and their families are supporting and caring for one another during the pandemic and throughout the webinar series. If you're interested in sharing your story, please contact Mary Ann Kane Breshi directly at mary.kane-breshi at maryland.gov or me, Donna Will, and I like to, um, oh, excuse me. So now we're going to introduce Mary Ann Kane-Breshi. Hi, Mary Ann. Hi, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families, welcome to our webinar. The purpose of this series is to bring people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, their families, however defined, along with others together. We, we want to connect, share information, ideas, and learn from one another, all in an effort to build knowledge, skills, and resiliency within ourselves and the community. In this series, we discuss and address a variety of topics and concerns with, with which individuals and families are faced. We do this with the help of our invited guests our, um, and subject matter experts, and of course, always through the lens of charting the life course framework. Charting the life course is a set of universal principles and tools. It was developed by the University of Missouri, Kansas City's Institute for Human Development Family to Family Program. That's a mouthful. Um, it's designed to help people with disabilities and their families to think about, create a vision for their good life, um, to think about what they'll need, what they need to know and do, navigate and or develop resources, supports and services, and finally, to just discover what it's going to take to live lives of their choosing and to do it. The fundamental principle of charting a life course is that all people have the right to live, love, learn, work, play, and pursue their aspirations in their community. This is especially pertinent today in this month of October, the National Disability Employment Awareness Month. The theme for the National Disability Employment Awareness Month is that is, I'm sorry, is America's recovery powered by inclusion. The, the, the fundamental principle of charting the life course is embodied in this theme for it reflects the importance of ensuring that people with disabilities have full access to employment and community involvement during this national recovery from COVID-19 and beyond. Today, you're going to learn about or hear about DDA's vision for employment. We'll hear from an organization dedicated to creating systems of support that enable diverse people with disabilities of all types to work in jobs that are productively, productive, financially rewarding, and life affirming. And then finally, we're gonna hear from an incredibly inspiring woman who is successfully self-employed and her mother, who is her main source of support. So let's get to it. Um, what I'd like to do first is to introduce our guest. We first, we have Kathleen Walker, Kathleen is the Director of Employment and Family Supports in DDA's Eastern Shore Regional Office. 
We have Corey Smith, who is a senior consultant with Griffin Hammes Associates. Mara Clausen, who is both an artist and business owner of When Colors Get Along. And finally, last but not least, her mom, Michelle Marks, who is Mara's main source of support. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kathleen. Kathleen? Hi, Marianne. Thank you so much. And thank you um, all for joining us today. We're really excited about um, today's topic, self-employment. And just again, to go over um, the Developmental Disabilities Administration Employment First trajectory, um, we really believe that employment first and, and supporting people and in competitive integrative employment can be done in a variety of ways that is customized to support the person's unique um, strengths and assets. And what we strive for, as you can see through the trajectory, is that we want community membership, we want flexibility for people. Um, we want to build capacity and quality. And we want to also make sure that there's seamless transition in supporting people to employment um, outcomes. And what we don't want, of course, is isolation, um, unemployment, and restrictions that don't support people to their individual employment goals. And so, again, um, we're really proud to support Employment First and Maryland as an Employment First uh, state. So with that, I'm going to introduce our first guest, um, Corey Smith from Griffin Hammerson Associates, and um, he will be talking about self-employment today. So Corey, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kathleen. And Marianne, you're moving the slides. So when I stop talking, you just move them. Okay. Uh, so I work for a company called Griffin Hammes Associates, and we believe that there's an unlimited number of ways to make a living. We believe that everybody's employable. And today we're gonna to focus on our efforts to help people with self-employment options. So I wanna talk just a little bit about the concept of customized employment. So customized employment's a newer person-centered employment strategy that builds on everything we've learned about support employment in the last 20 years, takes a more person-centered entrepreneurial approach based upon the determination of the strengths, needs, and interests of the job seeker, and also tries to build relationships within the community of a, a, an employer that could hire someone based on what they're good at. And, and in this scenario, also um, one of the strategies we use is self-employment. So we're going to talk about self-employment quite a bit today. So one of the ideas about with customized strategies is, is we believe that all human beings have some form of personal genius, right? We talk about discovering somebody's personal genius. And the first thing we want to do is we want to, we, we know that there's probably some case file over in the corner that's, you know, four feet thick and talks about people's deficits. But we want to discover somebody's personal genius, who this person is beyond the constructs of their disability. So discovery is a structured process. And we're, we're, we're doing like a 15 minute thing today, so we're not gonna get too deep, but we can always come back and do stuff for families. But we wanna get to know people's skills, their interests, how they wanna spend their day. Are they an ideal, we talked about ideal work culture, are they a morning person, the afternoon person? Do they wanna work um, with others? They wanna be alone? I, I had a mom, I to, told me recently, Corey, my son's the type of guy who gets lonely in the shower, so I don't let him work by himself. And she said I could steal that one. What tasks is this person good at? And what are their personal attributes? And, and we don't wanna do this alone, right? The more folks involved, the more diversity of ideas. And the best way to get ideas is to ask a lot of people. So we wanna do that. So Griffin Hammes was started by a, a, a two geniuses, Kerry Griffin, who's just recently retired. And Kerry lives um, in uh, Montana. And Dave Hammes, who passed away a few years ago, and Dave was a, a, an engineer and a rocket scientist. And, and he was a genius rocket scientist, and his best friend was his cousin with a disability. So Dave would say, every problem has a solution, right? So, th so uh, the problem of somebody with a disability not having employment or being included is the problem. Change. And, but Dave would say every problem has a solution. So instead of solving for the problem, if someone can work, we believe that all people can work. We just have to develop the strategies of how that can work. 
And with people with the most complex disabilities that I've never been able to figure out wage employment for, we often use self-employment. So Marianne, if you could, um, so we're gonna show you a video featuring Dave Hammes talking about Pop and Joe, one of the families that we've supported for probably 20 years. Let Dave tell you his story. So you gotta turn the sound on. Yeah, sounds not working. I'm sorry, I don't know what to do about that. Okay, well, we'll just move on then. We'll, we'll, I'll tell you a little about Dave and Joe and um, we'll, we'll, we, we can send people that link. Okay. So, so um, in Joe's case, um, Joe is a young man who, is, Joe is a young man who has Down syndrome and, and is on the autism spectrum. And during school, um, he was identified as someone that could only stand task for less than 30 seconds. And um, Joe's dad met Dave at a partners in policy making in Kansas. And Dave was talking about the philosophy of everybody able to work and all this stuff. And dad said, well, God, I'd really love to see Joe work, but if, I was, if he was here, I'd be holding on to his collar. He's just a wild man. Um, and, and there, Joe was again 16 years old, but that, that Christmas, you know, that he, he really had this thing about popcorn. So they were trying to figure out things and they did this little uh, survey. And although the school said he was only 30 seconds time on task, he would spend an entire afternoon putting popcorn on a string for three to four hours. So they thought Joe really had something about popcorn. So the family independently bought a, a popcorn uh, maker in the backyard and, and then they got help from uh, Kansas Voc Rehab. They wrote a plan for achieving self-support. And uh, Joe's business, the last thing, before the pandemic was doing about a quarter million dollars a year in sales from um, carnivals and sales. And his parents have aged out a bit and now he's moved to Atlanta, Georgia and he has his own building and he's kind of getting going again. Um, and I know that Michelle will talk a lot about, you know, the need for family support, but I don't want Michelle to completely scare you off that um, with thinking of self-employment, but we'll talk about that a little bit. So one of the, one of the things, uh, the stories that is one of my favorites is um, Polka Mike. So Mike is a dear friend of mine. Mike's probably in his late, early to late 60s now. And when Mike was in high school, he was obsessed with polka music and he's really into electronic music or electronic gadgets, cameras and, and darkroom photography. We almost got him a job with color and he didn't want to do that. And what happened was the vocational evaluator said, you know, and his disability was that he was too disabled and his employment ideas were unrealistic. So he had spent 20 years in the shelter workshop, but it didn't, it didn't beat the hope out of him. So when we finally got smart enough to try other things, sure enough, Mike's whole life was polka music, electronics, television cameras, and darkroom photography. So it, he lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and there's a, a local polka legend, a guy named Jolly Joe Timmer, who, who's a millionaire, who owns a polka radio station. Everything he has to do, is, has to do with polka. So we were out getting advice. So one of my staff called Joe and said, Joe, I've got this guy who's your biggest fan and we really like to come by and learn something about polka. And he said, oh my God, you must be talking about Mike. Mike's my biggest fan. Well, you don't even know this, but Mike's dad and I were best friends in high school until Mike, my boys played cotton pick and football and Mike's brothers all played soccer. But bring Mike by, God, I'd love to see him. It's been a couple of years. We'll figure out what to do with him. So we, we brought Mike in and Joe's so good to see him. And he put Mike on the radio um, for about 10 weeks. In the first week he was on the radio, 16 people from the neighborhood called in and said, this is the greatest thing. Well, Joe's kind of an old curmudgeon and you have to generate about $2,000 in marketing every hour you're on the radio. So we never pulled that off. So I was the one that, you know, had to tell Mike we had to end the radio show and him playing music. 
And, and he had no interest in working at a grocery store or doing anything. But one of my staff, a guy named Alan came in and said, you know, my sister-in-law is the activities director at the local nursing home. And these local folks are just polka crazy. But what if we rented some equipment, had Mike play some polka music? So we did that in about six weeks. Here we went, we had Mike's polka time with Polka Mike. And Mike's first started playing polka, then it was uh, Sinatra and country and rock and roll. And usually between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you've got to kind of get on Mike's list. So, you know, Mike gets to do what he likes, making money. And this, and this gives him a real sense of identity. But, but you know, it, it, there, there's not exactly a, a, a chain for polka music, right? So, so these are kind of inventive strategies. So, so Mike's not wage employment. He, he, he's, he owns a business and he's been in business for about 15 years. So self-employment is actually the fastest growing area in the job market. And now that we've, you know, we, we usually during recessionary times that this is, this is usually the number of uh, self-employment that businesses are popping up. There's a number of resources. So vocational rehabilitation, which you guys call DOORS, just came out with a new policy, one of only eight states called supported self-employment, where a person with a significant disability with a great team like Mara has with an agency and a family that's willing to support them, that they can support that. Uh, as we know, DDA is really taking a look at supporting self-employment. There's so many resources out there, small business development centers, score groups, community action. I could go on and on and on. Um, and then I just got a guy a grant through some of the new stuff uh, with the pandemic, $5,000, just for saying he was an artist. Um, and one of the things, as Michelle will probably tell you, is that one of the unique things about self-employment is there's still there's still barriers, there's still trips with self, with wage employment with people with SSI. But with, with, with self-employment, a person can have an unlimited amount of resources in their business plan and still keep their benefits. And we won't get into the nerdy stuff. Michelle and we'll tell you, we'll talk about that later. But but you can, you know, a person can own their own home, a person can own their own vehicle and have somebody drive it for them. So with self-employment, there's a lot of options to make this happen. So what we say about self-employment is that we call it about the three-legged stool because we've, we've been doing this about 25 years and we're, we're learning and learning every single day. But first, it has to be a good job for the job seeker. One of the complaints that DDA's had in some folks is some agencies in the beginning, we had people maybe doing greeting cards that weren't exactly Hallmark quality and, and they were kind of a hobby, right? Or some agencies that they would have a, a business where somebody was doing uh, vending machines, but the staff were doing all the work, right? So we want to make sure it's, it's a good fit for the job seeker. This is something the job seeker really wants to be involved in. This is how they want to spend their day. And it can't be a hobby. It's got to be a viable business. We, we need to be writing first class business plans and figuring out how people are going to make money. And the other thing is, is Michelle's going to talk a lot about is we have to have the right supports and we cannot let this you know, trash a family, right? If, and usually when, when I teach people self-employment, I say, please start with a supportive family. But we want to, if you can go to the next slide, um, we want to put together what we call a community action team, right? We want to have friends and family. We want to have job coaching supports. We want to have a supports coordinator whose job, my understanding, is the quarterback to bring people in to help. Small businesses are willing to help at any time as long as we don't waste their time. So having this team to support somebody is just imperative. So uh, Mara, this is one of the guys I wanted to meet you to meet for a possible date. This is Ronaldo. Ronaldo lives in uh, New Jersey. He's been in business about 15 years and he works with Jewish Family and Children's Services. And every other month, eight people meet with him and his mother and they, they talk about his business. And there are, three basically grandmothers on the board and let's just say they know a little bit about art and money so they support Ronaldo's business and pretty much almost all the business he gets is through these people's background in the arts he sells the painting as in, is their average price about five hundred dollars and his his art is featured all over the country um I could you know I, we could get into that but I mean that's a whole other two-hour deal he has the most incredible, his mom is, he needs to be friends with Michelle, uh, 
His mom's this incredible uh, advocate. And the year before the pandemic hit, he did $27,000 in sales. So he's doing pretty well. So there's so people, you know, how do we fund this? One third of the people that we, we represent over the age of 21 have, are, are sitting on what we call, those people have a supplemental security income and social security are sitting on a pretty easy to write plan for achieving self-support through social security. And that will uh, bring in about 10 to $14,000 to help somebody do something creative with employment, go to college, fund a business. We've got the Medicaid waivers where DEA is looking um, to support self-employment and, and maybe look more at that. Uh, Maryland Doors has created this great new um, program for people that, and, and they have, you know, you've got to make all the right moves. And then there's the on the, the one-stop centers. We've been working with the, the American job centers around the country and actually in Maryland, we helped them, uh, they purchased an ice cream truck on a, a bicycle for a woman in Maryland to sell ice cream. And, and then we've got, you know, people using their personal earnings, families, uh, taking out loans. And, and Griffin Hammis, we, we, we received a grant from the Kennedy Foundation years ago and we're able to back up any loan for a person. So if somebody goes, gets a business loan, well, that would be crazy. A person with disability doesn't have any credit rating. Well, what if somebody got a business loan, we would back up the loan with a CD. And if the person failed on the loan for any reason, that the, the, the Griffin Hammonds would just pay off the loan and then we would continue to support the person, okay? So there's a lot of different ways to fund businesses. So what drives people to self-employment, disability or not? It just seems like people that, you know, they want a little higher level of independence. They'd prefer to get away from the food, filth, and floor of, of the service industry. It's a natural skill fit. It, and then people with talented that, that things that are marketable. And 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 it's it's the opportunity to make more money, right? And to attain and maintain more money. And it gives people more creative freedom, more toward careers and, and self-ownership. So we, what we want to do, and we have all kinds of, so Griffin Hammonds has just uh, about six months ago received a grant from Rehab Services Administration, which is the administrative entity to revoke rehab in all 50 states. So our mission is to go out and train the new voc rehab counselors in every state on how to do self-employment, how to do it well. So one of the things, if we support a family, we, we want to start off with feasible, feasibility studies. And, and how do we know we have a valuable idea? Well, it fits the person, something they want to do. They bring something to the table. There's a market to sell this stuff, to make a reasonable wage. And the co and, and we're making money, right? The costs aren't outweighing the, you know, the expenses aren't more than sales. So the person's making money. We want to be really careful that we don't make people look incompetent. When the first, when self-employment first started, it went to a conference and a young man was selling buttons and some of the buttons were, rusty and I don't think that made the person look real competent. So we help that person go to the next level. And it helps the person achieve a goal of making some money and having the career choice that they want. So when, when we do this planning, we have to figure out how's the business gonna operate? When we talk about the PBO, what is the role of the person with disability? What, is, what are they gonna do? And then what are the things that, that they, what supports do they need that we need to put something else in place with marketing, with sales? People are always afraid of the taxes and accounting. And I think off the record, I've never let somebody pay for the accounting or taxes. I just go find a family friend who's retired, who does it for free. And, and, and it's, it's a team approach, but, but I can tell you that, you know, most businesses I know get help from outside sources. So I think self-employment is great for the for some people. It's a good it's a great way to make some money, and we're here to help um, as people might want to uh, consider this option for their families. Um, oh, I'm still going. So this is Thomas. Thomas is a young man in South Carolina that that we've been working with, and Thomas just turned 21 this year. Thomas is crazy about everything with fishing, museums. Art loves to draw, and he has this tremendous family. And, and he was a part of some grant work we've been doing. So we, we got to know Thomas looking at his personal genius. 
And, and what happened was we figured out that Thomas was all about fish, all about art, and he really wanted to do something. And we had some a $5,000 grant from the Developmental Disabilities Council. So the gentleman on the right side is Achilles, is a friend of mine who's a branding and uh, marketing expert. So he helped Thomas with the art and is the branding and he's developed Salty Bone worldwide. He does t-shirts, he does mugs, he does all this stuff. The business is growing so fast right now that, that it, it, it's kind of completely insane that mom won't let me market it. Um, and, and she works in our field and she keeps, I keep begging her and she said sales are through the roof and we cannot keep up. Um, and as soon as they can keep up, I'll, I'll let you know where to, I, I have a t-shirt like that and I paid good money for it. So Thomas is really involved with the research, with the drawing. He's in charge of uh, shipping and receiving, and he really enjoys what he does. Thomas is a young man on the spectrum who um, you know, has support needs, who probably wouldn't fit real well in your average kind of service job. And, but but this, this, this having the freedom to work when he can, when it makes the most sense, really works for him. So Thomas um, received a grant. So we wanna talk about what, what are some of the support needs? He, he got $5,000 in the South Carolina DD Council. And that's why we kind of moved in a hurry. He has a wonderful mom and dad who put a lifetime into supporting his love of all things, fishing, museums, art and drawing. He has a job coach that helps with day-to-day -day connections, uh, developing customers, developing new designs and running shipping and receiving. But his mom and dad, like Michelle, are still intimately involved up to their ears. And we're trying to get them some relief and put some more supports in there. And they're involved with the business planning, um, helping him get supplemental security income. And his uh, website that just went live a week ago, and his mom won't let me show it to you because she, she's still mad at me, Michelle, because they had to cancel their family vacation this summer because the business took off a little faster and they were home shipping out t-shirts all the time. But as you know, some businesses, that's a problem some of us really like to have. Yeah. <laughs> so self-employment's not for everybody, right? I must have lost, the, my best slide was a picture of Thomas with his mom with t-shirts on, but that's okay. It's a personal choice. We have to consider, do we have the financing and the funding to make this happen? Do we have a viable idea? Um, do we, and we do we have the supports available to make that happen? And, and there's a lot of people out there learning how to do this. So I, I think it's, it's a very doable thing. So this is my contact information, and but I really want to rush this a little bit and get to Mara, who's the absolute star of the show today. And I really want you to hear Mara's fear from Mara and Michelle, because they're, there's the superstars that I'm so proud of. Thanks. All right, thank you. And Mara and Michelle, you're on. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Mara Carson. I am an artist. I have my own business. It's called When Colors Get Along. Next page. Today, i like to tell you about me and my business, about starting the business and running the business, and also tell you about some of my accomplishments. Next, next slide. I, I am an artist. Art is my life. I love making art. Next slide. I name my business when colors get along. I know when my artwork is finished. When, when the colors get along. You can check out my website, markclawson.com. I have an online store there. Next slide. Also, I sell my art at shows. Next slide. I sell my original art and products. I sometimes do commissions. All so sometimes people pay to use my art for their business. Next slide. Also, I'd like to share my story 
by speaking to groups like like today. Next slide. I will tell tell you some of the re reasons why I started my art business. Next slide. I love making art and sharing my art with people. I love meeting new people. I'm a people person. Next slide. People tell me my art makes them happy. Some, sometimes people like, like, like to buy my art and my art keeps winning awards. Next slide. Two, I, two, next slide. Yeah, I wanted to, to earn income selling, selling my art ever since 2016. My business has made a profit. I pay my income taxes and sale taxes. Another important reason I have my own business is because I can have emergency health issues and I need a flexible schedule for my health. So I had to make my own plan. Next slide. Making my own plan was a lot of work. It was scary at, at first with lots of meetings and lots of papers for my mom. But we found Gail Godwin and her company, Share Support Maryland. Gail is my support broker for my self-directed services funded by DDA. She understands what I love to do and what I wanted to do. Gail helped me find and hire my wonderful staff and she found other great helpers for my business like free lawyers and grants and opportunities. Without Gail, I would not have all the great people on my team, Mara. Next slide. Gail also helps me to get a grant from Doors to help my business. The Grant was passed part of my program called Rise. Thank, thank you, Doris, for my Rise grant. Next slide. Now I'd like to talk talk about running my business. I have a great team of coworkers. We call our sales team, Mara, Rachel, Christina, Amy, and my mom all helped me build my art business. Next slide. I like to thank DDA for letting Rachel keep working with me on Skype during the pandemic. It was very important for my life and my business that we kept moving forward. Thank you. Next slide. So many people have helped me. Thank you, DDA, for self-direction. Gail and her company and introduced me to many, 
many uh, other helpful people and organization. My co-workers and my mom's help too. I have professional money people with who help keep track on the money and pay my taxes. Thank you to all these people and organization who helped make my life wonderful and help my business. Next slide. Since the pandemic, my art was chosen to be in over 10 different shows. Also, I like to thank my pro bono lawyer, Cynthia San Sanders, who helped me get copyrights and trademarks to protect my hard work and reputation. Next slide. Last July, a, a curator from the museum and modern art in New York gave my art second place in a natural competition. But my and but my next slide. Mm -hmm. But my biggest accomplishment is that I have a w wonderful art, wonderful life. <laughs> art makes me who I am and gi gives me lots of courage. Next slide. There's just one thing missing. I want to find the right guy for me and have my own family. Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> Next slide. I like to share with you one more thing. David Rockheim is a filmmaker who found me and he made a film about me called Living Art. David, David's film opened so many doors for me, like art shows and speaking to groups all over the United States. Next slide. I'd like to, to show you a little clip from the film, My Living, Living Art. Down, please. Oh, I am. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know that it's going to allow me to do that. Go back to it and start it, please. Yep. Since we don't have a volume, can somebody narrate what's happening here? Michelle, do you want to do that? Michelle or Mara, would you like to describe? Apparently, you all were not able to hear. Um, um. No okay. Hey, Mark, can you tell us what that video said about you? 
Do you remember what you said? Echo. Okay. Let's, um, given the echo and um, and that Mara wasn't prepared to talk about that, why don't we why don't we move forward? Okay. We can get rid of the echo. You have to mute um, yourself. One of your, I'm not sure. Okay. There's still an echo. I'm I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Okay. Okay. Um, Michelle, are both of your? Are you going to need? I don't know if both of your um, um, computers are are on and not muted. And maybe if you mute one, would help. I don't know if that's the issue. Okay. Now Mara, do you? Yeah, fine. that's good. Yeah. Hey, Mara. Mara, would you like to finish this up? All right. If you like, please check out my website to see my art and my Facebook page. And please follow my in Instagram and let me know if you like to be on my mailing list. Thank you. Mary Ann and Kath Kathleen for inviting me today. My gosh, Mara, you are so welcome. I, I have a quick question. Is that video clip on your website so folks could go there and see it? Yes. If you go to the website and click on um, Living Art, actually it's under About, and then there's a section on Living Art. Uh, there's a link to the preview and also on her bio, there's a link to both her CV and uh, the film. So they can see that's the very end of the film where she's interviewed at Art Enables, a wonderful art program that Mara's gone to since she was 13, no, 18, Eight. since 2013. And um, David found her there and filmed that section there and she um mara just spontaneously said love is all you need um love and memories are the most powerful thing so and then he edited it with those other scenes from the film in there that's wonderful so everyone please go to her her website and check that out um again i'd like to so mara thank you corey thank you at this time i i so we heard from mara and we heard from car corey um, Michelle, I'd like to get the family perspective. What What is your take? What's your experience with, with Mara being self-employed? Well, uh, Corey said that I was going to talk a lot, but uh, we were <laughs> planning for Mara to really tell you what it was like. And Mara, I'm so proud of you. And I'm um, proud to be Mara's mom. That's my favorite title of all the ones I've had. Um, Mara shared with you some of the amazing highlights and successes she's had with her art business. To get there takes a lot of time and effort. And um, the question you have to ask yourself is, are you willing and do you have the time? Um, building and running a business is a lot of work. And however, if your family member enjoys what they're doing, this is a goal that we have for all of our loved ones. And better yet, if it gives them a sense of purpose and connects them to community and becomes part of their identity, well, then the time and effort is well worth it. Um, in fact, it also connects the family to community and provides purpose and identity too. So what do, you have to ask yourself, what does your family member love to think about and to do? And Corey gave some great examples of that, um, jumping off of, of that start point. And, I've seen all kinds of businesses that individuals with disabilities have developed, like selling goods, like dog biscuits and custom buttons that weren't rusty and snow cones and selling services like scanning and shredding services. Um, but where do you start? Um, Corey spoke of, of the importance of research and learning and educating yourself and reaching out to others and building a great support team. I've attended so many lectures and programs um, in an effort to learn and to meet others in the field of art and business who might have information that could lead to mentors and opportunities. 
And Mara Support Broker has also been invaluable in connecting Mara to all sorts of professionals and to grants. I happen to be a certified support broker myself, but I am not a professional support broker, and I'm glad that Mara has hired one. Um, <laughs> I educate, um, educate yourself about the laws that have to be followed, especially if you want to maintain eligibility for Social Security, disability, and Medicaid. I've learned a great deal um, about some critical first steps to take when starting a business for an individual with a disability, some of which I learned the hard way, including a dispute with the Social Security Administration that required a hearing before an administrative law judge, but whose decision thankfully was in Mars favor after a lot of anxiety and work. Um, you can save yourself a lot of anxiety and wasted time by doing things correctly from the beginning. Lastly, and most important, try to make it fun. Uh, thank you, Marianne and Catherine, for inviting Mara and me today. Absolutely, thank you for being with us. And with that, what I'd like to do is just, um, so we've learned a lot, you've heard from Corey, we've heard about different experiences that he has had supporting folks, and of course, Mara and, and her mom. Here is some additional information just re regarding employment, and I just wanted to draw your attention to it. You will receive um, this handout, the, the PowerPoint in a handout format um, is available to you, so you'll have that. And with that, what I'd like to do is take some questions. We have um, about eight minutes because at the very end we, we have a couple of polls we'd like you to to complete if, if you're willing. Um, so with that, Kathleen is monitoring our questions and will be asking them for us. Kathleen? Hi everyone again and thank you so much Corey, Mara and Michelle for that great presentation. I learned so much every time I talk to you both and all three of you um, and Mara you did a fantastic job talking about your art. Um, so there's a lot of questions about mentoring, um, like if Mara was able to provide mentorship um, for somebody starting a small business, um, and would it be that they would contact you um, regarding any mentoring of your own experience if, if they want to connect further? Oh, well, that sounds like an interesting opportunity. Um, we've uh, haven't really looked into that. We, we I've been mentoring others you know, friends and people I've met through various organizations on things, various things along the way, uh, giving them hints, but in a formal setting or as a formal business, I'd have to talk with it. Maybe, Corey, you can help me figure out how, how, how a mentoring situation would work to make it, you know, efficient, but um, well worth others while. I, I had a slide that had four critical things to do when you're start, starting out and that's one um, thing that I'd, I'd be ha love to share, um, but it, it takes a lot of explaining and Corey uh, and a lot of perusing around um, uh, regulations too. So anyway, um, I, I'd love to, you know, pass it on around what goes around comes around and uh, we'd love to see other people be successful with self-employment too. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Would you, mentoring art, well, Mara has actually taught iPad drawing classes at Main Street and to other um, camps and programs. And um, you're the that, one who introduced me to iPads, my mentor, Christina Hagman. Right. We taught to adults, adults with aphasia. So even art mentoring, um, you know, has, has been there. But uh, it's great to talk to people too. You always learn something. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, thank you. Corey, do you have anything to add around mentoring programs that you know of? Um, well, we do a lot of work with families, and, and, but what, what we're trying to do is, you know, teach the system how to do this to be able to train the employment providers and work with families and, and build, build up the kind of the, the needed infrastructure for folks. And we're 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 ready to go to kind of help people figure that out. And th there are or people, there are families, there are just numerous families that are interested in this. And there are there are a number of fam of uh, employment providers that we've mentored for for a while now that that could use some more help. But we, we could we could put them in a position to to do mentoring as well. Sure. 
Well, thank you. I think those are great responses and definitely something to explore further. Um, I know that the administration is committed to definitely um, increasing self-employment support. So we will definitely be looking at furthering our research and collaboration with people like you to uh, support these outcomes. Um, we have some additional questions just on um, ethnicity and gender diversity and people who are self-employed and also are there um, any uh, studies or demographic information on um, people who are self-employed that are from diverse populations that you know of? And I think maybe Corey, I would be asking you. There, there is some, but I don't, I don't know if there's a lot. And I, I, I know that we did, there was some research on, on people on different disability groups on different. Um, so I, I, I think, I think there's, we've supported people all, all over across the spectrum of, of, you know, people's lifestyles and, and identities. Um, I don't know if I have it. it I, I can check on that, that, but I'm not, I don't think I have any research uh, at the tip of my, I don't, I just don't know, you know, if, if we've, if self-employment for people with disability is growing, I, but I just don't know if somebody's paid for the research to do some really good research on that yet. The, the numbers, good. whatever I've seen, like Stacey Jones present data on self-employment in this population, it's less than 1%. Um, in the population. So then looking within that very small data point, but I, I, she has some graphs I've seen her present. Sure. I think those are all opportunities that we can continue to um, gather outcome data and research and then see um, how we can support people from um, very diverse populations and self-employment and where we really are as far as starting to where we really want to be to support people in Maryland. Um, I think we have just time for one more question. Um, uh, there are some there are some questions about wanting to know more about um, the Rise program um, as a business development program, not just a grant program. Um, please tell us more about the new supported business format for Rise. Is that actually taken in place yet? I'm um, not sure. Uh, right, we. Uh, got the grant in 2017 and it basically finished last year, the end of this year. Um, the uh, contractor that has it that supported us at the end was um, Psychometric Solutions, Tamika Payton. Um, and I don't know if she still has, um, is, is running the RISE program. They were teaching, um, you know, writing business plans and various things. So Tamika Payton at Psychometric Solutions, I think, would be the person to contact. Great. Thank you, Michelle. And with that, I think we'll go to the poll. Thank you all so much for answering the questions. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Donna, can you, can you um, pull up the first poll, please? Give me a second. All right. Okay. First one's, uh, where do you live? Instead, into that. Looks like about half half of you have voted. Really appreciate you all taking the polls. It just helps us to to know um, whether you're satisfied, what you're interested in, so we can better support you. So also where you do live, so we, we know who we're reaching. So thank you so much. All right, okay. we're at 60%, you, know, you, you, you wanna close it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's we're go gonna ahead. close the poll and I'll share it. So it looks like 27% um, are in central region, 16% in eastern, 33% in southern, 24% in western. Wonderful. Okay. Poll number two. What is your relationship to disability?
That's it. So Donna, I'm not able to see what's happening. So I'm gonna. We got about 62% people um, have voted. There's still a few more voting. Okay. 64, 65. <laughs> oh, good. More people are participating in this one. Okay. I'm going to close it. Okay. Great. And share the results. So um, we have 2% two, 2 are a person with a developmental disability, 29% are family members, 9% are coordinators of community services. 31% DDA provider and 29% other. Okay, great. Thank you. And third poll. We're almost are there, you, guys, gals. <laughs> are you or the person you support receiving services through DDA? Yes, no, I'm not sure. That half of you have voted. I'm going to leave it open for a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to okay. yeah. and share. So um, 58% says yes, 36% says no, and 5% says they're not sure. Okay, all righty. Uh, Number four. All right, were you satisfied with this webinar? Um, almost 70% have responded. That's great. Yeah. Go ahead. Why don't you? We'll close that. We can close it. Yeah. It's just, um, we're putting, we're really asking people to work here. <laughs> this is the final one. Thank you for your patience and willingness again. Well, we got 58% are greatly satisfied. Awesome. All right. One more. Depending on the topic, will you attend future webinars? Very good. Okay. All right, we're going to close it. Yes, please. Thank you. And 96% said yes, and 4% said maybe. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you again for your patience and, and completing those polls. I, again, want to thank Corey, Michelle, Mara for being here with us today, and Kathleen. Uh, what a wonderful webinar. Thank you for sharing your, your time, your expertise, and your experience with us. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us, Deputy Secretary Bernie Simon, Patricia Sestoki for making all this possible, and then invite all of you to join us again next month, November 10th, a wonderful webinar on Maryland caregiver resources, supports, and services. A lot to be learned about what's available to folks. So meantime, just be well and until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.